First step is always cut out all the leather pieces. And yes, this takes a while. Now we're gonna go get some water. Bring it over to the table. And grabbing all our straps, we'll begin to dip them in the water one by one. I'll grab my wing dividers and I'll mark a line on all the straps just to add some decoration to them. Now we'll let oil rain from the heavens generously to apply onto our leather straps. This will help with waterproofing all the little parts. And also, as you'll see in a little bit, it makes them more flexible. Look how easily it bends. Here's a piece that doesn't have oil. You can see it doesn't really bend as much. Now we'll begin to apply the Kanaba cream and resiline. I find it's best to apply it in light, even coats. Now I'll dye the bigger pieces brown, both the front and the back. I found it's best with resiline to go as fast as you can with a cloth to cover as much surface as possible. Now I'll bring over my press so that I can press in my logo in one of the pieces. I'll line it up and pull on the lever to lower the press. I think it leaves a really nice indent. I took some tokenol and I put it on the back of the leather, the fuzzy side, just to slick everything down and make it nice and smooth. I found a good tool for this, it's just one of these cheap spongy brushes. I've tried using other things, but this seems to work really well. And now I'll just slick it down. My original plan was to burnish every edge by hand, but after seeing how many straps, I decided to get a little help from electricity and got my Dremel. I used to use a product called Gum Tragacanth to slick down all the edges, but Tokenol just seems to be the absolute best. I just finished burnishing a whole bunch of straps. I got one left, and I couldn't be happier. See all these? Done. Last one. <sighs> Done. Those are all burnished. I just have to attach this to the back piece. I've already roughed it up here. So let's do that now. Before I test, or before I put a rivet on my actual piece, I should probably test it out on some leather here first. I think that was too much pressure. It left a mark. I really don't want to leave a mark. See that? So we'll try again. That's better. Last one. Let's not mess up now, that would suck. Four for four. All right, let's go stitch this up. One problem. It's the first time I've made this, and I put my logo on the back, but I forgot that there's going to be stitching holes there. We all make mistakes. I think I'm going to leave it because it'll be on the back, and I'll just continue. But if I was going to do it again, I'd put it right there. I'd put it right there. you can see the importance of burnishing the edges. If a little water got on it, it'll just beat up and you can wipe it right off. 
All that's left now is riveting all the pieces on. Here are the two shoulder straps done and riveted on. One thing to note here if you do this yourself, for these three holes that are meant for rivets to hold on the buckle, I actually ended up using a smaller one than the 8mm standard size, and I think it looks really good. So at this point I noticed that I forgot to include belt keeps, so I just make my own here. Again, if you're making this, try not to forget this step. It's a bit of a pain to do after the fact. I was actually going to switch over the thread to be hidden, but I liked it so much I kept it on the outside. For the pieces that go under your armpit, there's these two straps which are supposed to sandwich together, but since I lined mine, it's too thick and the rivet wouldn't go all the way through, so I had to skive mine down. It's certainly not the easiest thing to accomplish with a head knife, but I got it done. And yeah, there was on one that I messed up and I had to make a new strap. Now you can see that since I skived them down, the rivet will actually fit all the way through and you can actually rivet the two sandwich pieces together holding the harness to the under armpit piece. And there you go, all done. I really enjoyed making this project. It took over 16 hours to create with filming and modifying the pattern, but I think it was worth it. So my opinion of the pattern? Well, I don't think it's a beginner friendly project. I don't by any means think it's a difficult project to follow. Tony makes this pattern pretty self-explanatory. So yes, I would recommend this pattern to anyone looking to create a harness for themselves. Just know that you might have to modify it to fit your needs. And that's the video guys, if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more. Thanks.